subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chanzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 16th of March. India rolls out COVID-19 vaccine doses for children aged 12 to 14. Opposition alliance has numbers to oust Pakistan PM Imran Khan claims PMLQ leader Ilahi. Sri Lankan Finance Minister meets Indian Prime Minister Modi amid economic crisis. And now for all the details. India on Wednesday began administering doses of COVID-19 vaccine to children aged between 12 and 14 as schools have reopened across the country. This comes as India's third wave of COVID-19 infections driven by the Omicron variant has receded. The country reported 32,811 active cases on Wednesday. India on Wednesday started administering doses of COVID-19 vaccine to children aged between 12 and 14 as public and private schools have reopened across the country. The children in the age group estimated by the government to number 50 million are being administered Corbivax made by Biological E Limited. a domestic firm that secured emergency approval for its use in children last month indian prime minister narendra modi took to twitter and said it is an important day and urged citizens in the age group to get jabbed pehle sabko vaccine ki yojana ki thi aur aaj hai na aaj hum jaise bachcho ki ke liye bhi na vaccine ki yojana ki hai to hai na hum log ke liye hum log ki safety ke liye hum log aaj vaccine lagwa rahe hain apni school mein se aur हमारे हमारे और हमारे परिवार के लिए वैक्सीन सही है इंडिया हैज एडमिनिस्ट्रेड ओवर 1.8 बिलियन वैक्सीन डोजेस सिंस इट्स वैक्सीनेशन ड्राइव बिगन इन जनवरी 2021 द नंबर्स इंक्लूड मोर देन 90 मिलियन टीनएजर्स एज्ड बिटवीन 15 टू 17 हु हैव बीन इनोकुलेटेड हां पहले जब हम स्कूल आते थे तो फिर कोविड का डर रहता था लेकिन अब हम वैक्सीन लेने के बाद कोविड का डर इतना नहीं रहेगा अब थोड़ा कम है फिर दूसरा डोज भी लेंगे हम तो फिर कोविड का डर पूरा नहीं रहेगा हमारा ऑन वेंसडे इंडिया रिपोर्टेड 2876 न्यू इंफेक्शंस व्हाइल द एक्टिव केसेस डिप टू 32111 देयर हैज बीन अ सिग्निफिकेंट फॉल इन केसेस इन द साउथ एशियन नेशन इन रीसेंट डेज द गवर्नमेंट ऑन मंडे एक्सपेंडेड द वैक्सीनेशन ड्राइव एंड ड्रॉप्ड रेस्ट्रिक्शन ऑन बूस्टर डोजेस फॉर दोस ओल्डर देन 60 ओनली इफ दे हैड अ कोमोर्बिडिटी कंडीशन Three terrorists were neutralized in an encounter in Nogam area in Srinagar district of India's Jammu and Kashmir territory on Wednesday. A senior police official said that three of them were associated with Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba terror outfit and were allegedly involved in the killing of Samir Bhatt, a village head, on March 9. During Wednesday's gunfight, the police also recovered one AK-47 and two pistols, the official said. This came a day after another Lashkar-e-Taiba terrorist was neutralized in Avantipura in Jammu and Kashmir on Tuesday. India has long accused Pakistan of training and infiltrating terrorists into Kashmir Valley to spread unrest. Pakistan, however, denies the charge. Chaudhry Parvez Ilahi, leader of Pakistan Muslim League Q, an ally of ruling PTI government in Punjab province, has rung alarm bells for Prime Minister Imran Khan. Ilahi in an interview with a private news channel said the opposition alliance has the support of more than required lawmakers to pass the no confidence motion against Khan in the national assembly warning that there are plenty of surprises in store Punjab province speaker and Pakistan Muslim League Qayyad leader Chaudhry Parvez Ilahi in an interview with a private news channel said that opposition alliance PDM has the support of more than required lawmakers to pass the no confidence motion against prime minister imran khan in the national assembly ilahi whose party is an ally of the ruling pti pakistan tehreek e insaf in the center and punjab on tuesday warned that there are plenty of surprises in store 
The speaker termed the alliance of the three opposition major parties, JUIF, PMLN and PPP as lasting and stable. This came hours after Imran Khan said the entire nation was ready to go down with him rather than supporting the three stooges, PMLN President Shahbaz Sharif, PDM Chief Maulana Fazlur Rahman and PPP Co-Chairman Asif Ali Zardari as he slammed the opposition amid rising political tensions. He thanked the opposition for moving the no-confidence motion and said that through the move, his party had strengthened with people all geared up for March 27 rally a day before the National Assembly votes on the no-trust motion. Meanwhile, PDM's Fazlo Rahman on Tuesday announced to postpone its March 23 public gathering in Islamabad due to the Organization of Islamic Cooperation meeting in the federal capital on the same day. The Grand Power Show will now take place on March 25. Interior Minister Sheikh Rashid Ahmed on Wednesday warned Rahman that he would have to pay the price if the joint opposition's movement puts the country into an anarchic situation. Moving on, hard hit by COVID-19 pandemic, fish farmers in Gilgit, Baltistan have said they are facing huge losses amid a decline in tourism and local sales over the past two years. They have sought relief from the government in the form of subsidies and marketing mechanisms to help boost the sector which also provides employment to scores of locals. Trout fish farming is one of the popular occupations and provides employment to scores of locals in Gilgit, Baldistan. However, fish farm owners in the illegally occupied region say the industry has been hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic, while tourism has declined and local sales have also dropped over the past two years. Fish farmers have lamented the Pakistan government only makes big claims while they have received no help so far. They have demanded they should be provided fish feed at cheaper rates and government should introduce marketing mechanisms to help boost their business. covid fish farmers product tourism और दूसरा जो लोकल सेल था वो खत्म हो गया फीड और सीड है उसके साथ हमारे पास लेबोरेटरी का हमारे पास सबसे बड़ा इशू आ रहा है क्योंकि जो फीड हमारे पास आती है उसकी क्वालिटी क्या है उसको हम चेक नहीं कर सकते हैं फिर जो सीड है वो हमें महंगे दामों मिलती है फिर उसमें 80% मोर्टेलिटी है लोकल्स ब्लेम इस्लामाबाद्स इनडिफरेंट एटीट्यूड टुवर्ड्स द रीजन हैज अफेक्टेड ऑल सेक्शंस ऑफ द सोसाइटी अपार्ट फ्रॉम फिशिंग इंडस्ट्री शॉपकीपर्स होटेलियर्स and other small businesses in the region are also facing an acute crisis. Afghanistan's economy collapsed last year and thousands fled after US and other forces withdrew and the Islamist Taliban took over the country. Ahead of a key donor conference set to take place this month, the United Nations said on Tuesday that the dire humanitarian situation in Afghanistan should not be forgotten as the world's attention is focused on the conflict in Ukraine. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees said on Tuesday that the dire humanitarian situation in Afghanistan should not be forgotten as the word attention is focused on the conflict in Ukraine ahead of a key donor conference set to take place this month. During a visit to the Afghan capital, UN High Commissioner Filippo Grandi said that the war in Ukraine and the ensuing refugee crisis was rightly the focus of global attention, but added the international community could not afford to neglect Afghanistan. The entire attention of the world is focused on Ukraine and by the way, on the refugee crisis that Ukraine, the, the Ukraine war is producing, and rightly so, because it's big, it's serious, I thought it was important to pass the message that other situations, which also require political attention, and resources should not be forgotten and neglected, especially Afghanistan. The war-torn country's economy collapsed last year and thousands fled after U.S. and other foreign forces withdrew. The Islamist Taliban took over the country. Afghanistan has around 3.4 million people displaced within the country, according to UN figures, and around 2.6 million refugees outside the country. Thousands were evacuated from the country in the wake of the fall of Kabul to Taliban in August. ای اشتاد خانه مکتب نداره کلینیک نداره و آب نداره 
دیگه مشکلات از نگاه صحت و خودتان میفهمه که بیادر گل این مردم مطلق زیر خط فکر زندگی میکنه For those left behind, the economic situation is dire with roughly 23 million people experiencing acute hunger and 95% of population not eating enough food according to the UN. Sri Lanka's Finance Minister Basil Rajpaksa on Wednesday met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi a day after he flew to India to sign a 1 billion US dollar credit line to tackle a worsening financial crisis. Historically weak government finances, badly timed tax cuts and the COVID-19 pandemic has wreaked havoc on Sri Lanka's economy, leading to a currency devaluation. Sri Lanka's Finance Minister Basil Rajapaksa on Wednesday called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi, a day after he flew to India to sign a US$1 billion US dollars credit line to tackle the island nation's worst financial crisis. The finance minister was expected to hold talks with his Indian counterpart Nirmala Sitaraman on Thursday before signing the deal, reports suggested. On Tuesday, opposition leaders led a march of hundreds of protesters through Sri Lankan capital Colombo against the worsening economic crisis that has brought fuel shortages and spiralled food prices. This came after months of resistance, President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's government said on Tuesday it would begin talks with the International Monetary Fund for assistance next month. Historically weak government finances, badly timed tax cuts and the COVID-19 pandemic which hit the lucrative tourism industry and foreign remittances have wreaked havoc on Sri Lankan economy, leading to a currency devaluation last week. Sri Lanka's foreign exchange reserves have fallen 70% in the last two years to about $2.31 billion. Amid wide vaccine coverage and a low positivity rate, the Maldives on Sunday lifted its health emergency declared in 2020 and relaxed the mandatory mask policy. As part of its COVID-19 response going forward, the Ministry of Health will draw up and implement a national strategy and action plan. President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli in a televised address to the country said Maldives suffered losses roughly around 4 billion US dollars due to the pandemic. Home to some 500,000 people, the Indian Ocean archipelago is heavily reliant on tourism sector. President Soli thanked international partners, global organizations and neighboring countries, including India, in helping the country overcome the impact of the pandemic. India had announced a 250 million US dollars package to the Maldives during the pandemic. India also gifted 200,000 doses of COVID shield vaccines to the Maldives in January to February 2021 while Mali purchased another 100,000 doses commercially. Hundreds of widows celebrated the Festival of Colours Holi in India's Vrindavan city on Tuesday as they broke orthodox traditions that forbid them to take part in celebrations. Marking the onset of spring, Holi represents a time of forgiveness, renewed friendship and the triumph of good over evil. Scores of widows shunned by the families and abhorred by society on Tuesday took part in celebrations of Holi in India's northern Vrindavan city, giving a toss to orthodox traditions that forbid them from taking part in the festival of colours. The celebrations at the historic Gopinath temple first began in 2013 and are organised aid group Sulab International. The widows drenched in vibrant colours sang and danced to mark the festival which is associated with the eternal love of Hindu Lord Krishna and his concert, Radha. Meanwhile, thousands of devotees celebrated Holi with Bhasam or pyre ashes at the famous Manikarnika Ghat on the banks of River Ganga in Holi Varanasi city on Tuesday in dedication to God of Destruction, Lord Shiva, who is believed to have started the tradition. Celebrated at the onset of spring, Holi represents a time of forgiveness, renewed friendship and the triumph of good over evil. Though Holi is a single-day festival elsewhere in India, 
It is almost a 10-day affair in parts of northern Uttar Pradesh state. The actual event falls on March 18 this year. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.
Thank you. 